Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This time I will break down this concept art which was created to visualize the town of Westfold. It is not meant to be an in-depth technical tutorial. I will focus more on breaking down the elements of the shot and show my process when creating this type of work. This channel is about creating a fantasy world and visualizing it through digital art. If you want to see more about the story and description behind this image, please click the link in the description. I created this artwork in Unreal and Nuke. However, the first thing I always do when creating this type of work is to find the various elements I will use in my scene to build up the shot. When I create concept art like this, I hack and slash my way through the process in order to do it fairly quickly and I use any element I can find to visualize the idea of the setting. In this particular scene I have used assets from Kitbash 3D, mainly the buildings from the Dark Fantasy set. I have used Jogast's brushified textures for the ground and of course Quixel Mega Scans for props and textures. I have also used other bits and pieces from the Epic Marketplace. Let's jump into the engine. The first thing I do is to delete everything from the outline so I'm left with a totally dark scene. I turn the view mode, mode to unlit and make sure the game settings exposure is turned off. You want full control over all aspects of the scene. I start with creating a landscape. For this landscape I have added the brushify landscape material to it and selected the texture I want whether it is mud, grass or puddles, I can then start to paint in Westfall's main road. It is fairly easy to create your own landscape material using textures from Megascans, but again, when creating concept art, speed is important, and here Brushify is a great and, and requires very little initial setup. Once I'm happy with the way the road looks, well knowing it will be covered with debris, props, buildings and decals, it is time to set up the camera. I always use the Cine camera as this has extra settings that simulate a real camera and is easier to obtain a more cinematic look. In the beginning you can just set up the camera roughly so you can work out from the camera's perspective when you add the buildings and props of the shot. For the camera settings in this shot I used a film bag of 16.9 DSLR, a universal zoom and a focal length of 20mm. The aperture was set to 8. Now it's time to start set dressing the shot. I always start with the main building blocks and work my way down from there. Laying out the buildings can take quite a while as you want to make sure that they look natural in the shot and are all positioned correctly within the frame. Once all the buildings are set, I start to add some details to the ground by adding some debris and other elements, just to give the ground more depth and make it look more used. Here is some rubble from the Megascans library. And then in order to make the city look older and a living place, it is time to add all the different props that make up the set. In this case I used barrels, wooden chunks, carts, old wheels, firewood and many other things that just fit into the medieval-like setting we are creating here. I also modify a few of the buildings by adding extra elements to them, such as stone walls and windows. I start to think about the lighting in the shot. I knew I wanted to have a quite traditional color scheme, a cold bluish background combined with a warmer orangey firelit foreground. So I added a few torches around the street. Just to give it a bit more of an organic feel, I added a couple of trees just to break up some of the straight edges around the buildings. For the sky I used a sky dome with a matte painting projected on it. It gives a great sense of distance and also helps when lighting the overall scene. Lastly I would add a few decals just to break up even and clean surfaces. This part of Westfold is old and grimy and the decals are a quick way to add variation. I would also use the foilage tool in Unreal to paint in some small stones and dry grass around edges and frames. Once I'm happy with the setup, it is time to light the scene. This is where the magic happens. I turn the view mode from unlit to lit 
and since we haven't added any lights yet, the scene is almost dark. I start to play around with the exponential height fog. It is great for creating depth to the scene and adding a nice atmosphere in the background. Once this is done, it is time to light the scene. I start with a directional light source. And afterwards, I start to add different types of lights throughout the scene to make certain parts of the scene pop and simulate an ambient light. For the torchlight, I use point lights with an orange tint as well as a soft fall off. One thing I forgot to mention is the post-process volume, which I set early on in the lighting phase. Here I do a little bit of grading to help along the mood and feeling of the scene. I mainly adjusted the tint, gamma and gain as well as the slope and toe of the shot. Here you can see the shot with and without the post-process volume. It just helps with the, that nighttime feel that we are going for. Once you are happy with the base of the shot, it is time to render it out. As you can see in some places, it looks rather unfinished and messy, but this is okay since we can fix this in the compositing phase. Remember, we are only working on a still image here, which makes it very easy to paint over things later and to change areas that don't work. The point of the concept art is simply to communicate the idea for further development as the scene progresses into an actual production film or animation. This I will get back to in a future video. Here we are in Nuke. On the left is the raw render from Unreal and on the right we have the final composite. The things I've done here is mainly to paint the ground and buildings in order to break up very straight CG edges, clean surfaces and make the ground look more organic. This could also be fixed in Unreal, but to save time I did a quick paint job here. I have also played a lot with the background, adding extra atmosphere like volume rays to simulate light breaking through the clouds, and I also added some noise fog to break up the otherwise flat background. I have composite rain and added torch fires using 2D elements. I painted in the lonely person in the center of the street, then I have done a fair amount of grading to pop the highlights and midtones to make it look more wet. I also vignetted the lower foreground to make the audience focus on the middle of the image. I have made the foreground person dark in order to contrast with the bright background again to lead the viewer's attention to this area. This concludes the breakdown of this piece of concept art. I hope you got an idea of the different phases I went through to get to the final look. The illustration now forms a visual representation of the world of Westfold, a fantasy world we are creating and visualizing in this channel. Please subscribe and like this video if you are interested in world building, storytelling and visual arts and want to see the creation and stories behind more locations in our constantly developing fantasy world. Also feel free to comment on great ideas for locations you would like to see in the world of Westfold. Now, take a look at the story and description behind this image and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. The town of Westfold. Dark streets and darker alleyways. Always a thin fog covers the grimy exterior. Once a bastion of secret learning, now a mining town. Tracks slit the muddy streets, cutting deep from the Firestone mines to the docks, where ships sail off to better places. And the tower in the distance, like an almost forgotten memory, still hold secrets from the past as the last scholars get older, fading. On this godless hour of the night, as a shivery shower soaks the streets, is where we find our hero, a boy, alone, astray, 
His journey is about to begin. Yesterday he lost his mother. Today he lost his way. <laughs> <laughs>